What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the vlog. It's early morning here and uh, we're going out to do our first duty of the day. Oh, we still got the bottle baby. Um, I told you guys I would keep you updated. So far, as of last night, she was still alive. So we're coming out to do our next feeding and hopefully she's still alive. And you guys seen we gave the mom the oxytocin shot and it did not work. It didn't drop her milk. Or anything else and after so many days of feeding the baby uh, formula milk or any other kind of milk if the milk from the mom is not passing through the digestive tract of the baby eventually the mom will be like well this baby does not smell like me uh, she's not passing my milk she don't have my scent so I'm not gonna mess with her no more and actually the mom actually jumped out of the pen yesterday and uh, she just went on with the herd she just no longer had the uh, care or desire to take care of the baby because she didn't think it was hers anymore. So we're going to walk in here and uh, hopefully she's still alive. I told you guys I would show you either way. And we will try to get her a bottle before we get started on the other projects today. So some of the projects we're going to do today, I'll go ahead and tell you guys. I'm going to work on the uh, hog shed and then... Um, I got to get the hog shed done. I got to get the roof on. I got all the walls done. Got to get the roof on because we got the hog feeder in. And we're ready to get that thing out. I got a truckload of food. And once we do that, we'll be able to fill it up. But So I put this in here. That way she can stay nice and toasty in here. Okay, never mind. That did not end so well. Uh, hate to inform you, the baby did not make it. And it's such a shame. Um, we kind of think she was born prematurely. Uh, we're pretty positive she was. She was so little and the mom's milk didn't ever come in. So that's a good sign that she was uh, kind of early or premature. So anyways, uh, she's not here now. So uh, we won't be having the bottle feeder. Uh, the mom's already turned out with the rest of the goats. So now I guess we can focus on the rest of our uh, projects we got going on. Let me walk in the shop and show you. Uh, you guys seen the last video where I went to the Sawyer Ridges farm and uh, picked up the uh, broiler chickens or the meat chickens. And here is the project I'm working on for that. Working on this uh, chicken tractor. And uh, hopefully this will make things a lot easier for us raising those meat birds here. I've been out here every night working on this thing. Just for these little guys. They are sucking down the water and draining these little feed bins. I have to come out here twice a day. And those are the baby turkeys. The black ones right there and the white ones are the uh, meat chickens. And they're barely just a week old. And they just grow so fast. I mean so fast. All they do is eat, sleep drink water, and uh, go to the bathroom, and that's pretty much it. So, I'm uh, kind of crushed on time to get this done. I'm trying to get the hog pen done, trying to get this chicken tractor done. Um, hopefully this thing turns out okay. We haven't ever used anything like this before on our farm. Uh, our idea behind it is, is to raise them in here until they're a couple weeks old, and then be able to uh, leave the door open in the daytime and let them go out and about and kind of free range on grass and we're going to put our uh, electric fencing around our poultry netting that way hopefully no predators will get them and uh usually these types of chickens these corners crossed are supposed to be ready to butcher like you know six to eight weeks depending on how big you want them so we're experimenting so we don't know for sure about everything we're getting into so it's going to be a learning process to us, but we hope to be able to raise these birds for our family and hopefully to maybe start selling some for some other people. So let's talk about the other project we're going to try to get done. After we get the metal on the roof, on the pig pen, here is the new Osborne pig feeder. And I'll do, uh, I'll probably do an update on this. It's just all in pieces right now, but this is an automatic hog feeder. And this is going to be what is going in the hog shelter that I'm building. And uh, we'll talk more about it once I get it all put together and uh, get the roof on the hog shed so I can get it out there and get it filled up with feed. So that's enough talking. I got to get this moved out of the way so I can get my ranger out. 
It's got all my tools in it, and I'm gonna head down here in a minute and start putting that metal on the roof. All right, guys, so I'm out here at the pig shed now, right here. I got the uh, roofing material on the trailer, but before I get started, before I get the roof on here, I got some uh, six foot T post, and uh, I asked you guys for some uh, advice because I didn't want this to be anchored down in concrete in the ground, but these Oklahoma storms and all these uh, high winds that we get here, this thing could easily be flipped over and we don't want it, anything to be damaged or any animals injured. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some uh, of the, I'm gonna take two of these T-posts and I'm gonna drive one on one corner on the front and on the opposite corner of the back and take some belling wire and anchor it down real well to the T-post. And that should keep it from flipping over. Uh, just something for a little added security. I mean, it is heavy, but if these winds come up just right, it could flip it over pretty easy. I do have it facing east because all, all of our torrential winds come from the south and the west. More than likely. So, uh, facing east is the best way to go for that type of stuff. So, I'm going to uh, get busy driving these posts before I put the roof on and um, get this thing tied down. guys got the roof all screwed down and now it is time to put some trim on and my roof is actually 12 foot 7 I got just a little bit of overhang and I allowed a few inches back here for the guttering so when I mount the gutters hopefully the water will hit it just right and flow into there I don't have a lot of experience with gutters, so hopefully I'm doing it right but anyways I got a little scrap piece up in the shop uh, from what I was saying is my roof's 12 7 and these only come in 12 10 or 14 foot sticks at my supplier So I just went ahead and got a 12 foot and then I'll put a piece of scrap that I got back in the shop underneath this Kind of shingle it so the water sheds over it. So I'm gonna get this screwed down uh, the front everything come out good. It's pretty square I think it'll serve well for a hog house and uh and put that feeder right here in the middle, it should stay dry. So I'm gonna get busy mounting this trim. We got some other stuff to go do here in a little bit, but I need to get this done very bad. All right guys, so we got the uh, top corner trim piece on. I still gotta get the little scrap piece over here. But now it's time to put some trim on the back corners. And the best way I found to cut this trim is with a uh, grinder with a metal cutoff saw, or a blade, I mean. And uh, I already got my markings here. I'm gonna cut it about six foot and cut it, put a square on it, mark it all the way around. And now I'm just gonna try to cut it as clean as possible. But when you're using this thing, you wanna make sure to wear safety glasses because this stuff throws metal like crazy.
So I got that cut. I'm going to get that drilled up there now. I know a lot of people like to use like 10 snips and stuff like that. Um, I don't have a good pair right now anyways. And every time I've tried to use them, I can't get them to go straight. This is the best way I've found to do this. guys there is the corner trim just got to do that piece right there and i'll just about be done i'll just have to come back and uh put these corner pieces on so there you go we got the shed pretty much done um i'll come back here in a little bit when i go back up and uh, get a cool drink i'll come back and uh, put these scrap pieces on the end here and all the metal will be complete now let's take a look at the inside. I think it turned out pretty well. Like I said, for those of you that didn't catch it before, this is seven foot tall right here, and it slopes back 12 feet all the way, and it's six foot. So we got a foot of fall for 12 foot. I know that's not a lot, but this is just a hog shed. Um, normally, your typical hog sheds will just be short enough to where the hogs can get in here. A lot of them I see are like five foot or four foot on the front and like three foot in the back. So the reason we wanted this one to be like this is if we ever wanted to convert it into a goat pen or heck, who knows, on our farm we're always coming up with all these different animals and stuff. Heck, we might have zebras or something someday. Who knows? So we just wanted it to be kind of universal uh, in case we don't, you know, use this for the hogs in the future. But I think it's going to work out well. Oh man, I'm thirsty. Uh... I got the corners anchored down. I got the T-post driven down. I got some bailing wire in there. I'm gonna get some more bailing wire and wrap around there. And this one back here on the opposite corner. I don't think the wind will blow it anywhere, but it still could. So we'll have to watch it and see. If it does look like it might, I might put some uh, another post on each other of the... Uh, ah, my mouth's too dry. I might put a post on the opposite corners that I don't have any on yet. Or I actually might get some steel post and uh, drive down in the ground. If it's that big of a problem, as far as the bedding, I don't think I'm going to put anything down here for the pigs. I'm going to let them do their own thing. It's just dirt. It's going to be cool. Uh, like I said, this faces the east. So they'll get a little bit of the morning sun, but it won't be anything hot. And uh, the main purpose of this is to keep them shaded, which we got trees all over. They got plenty of shade. But this will keep them out of the uh, severe weather, you know, like the hailstorm we got the other night or any kind of rain, torrential rains or wind. And if we want to raise them in the wintertime, this will be a uh, great shed for that as well. We can put straw in there, whatever. Uh, I don't know. We've still got to come up with some design concepts, whether we're going to put some kind of a corral system or like pins or gates or something like that in here for the hogs. Because eventually we will have to catch the hogs to load them up in a trailer to take them to the processor. So I'm going to go get a quick drink. I'm going to go uh, get the rest of the scrap uh, corner pieces to put on there and get that done so I can call this a day. The only thing i got left that I might do here in the future is put some plywood on the inside. Uh, the hogs are going to rub their backs along it on the outside and the inside. So the only thing I expect to happen on the outside is they will probably rub the paint off a little bit. Uh, we've used these in the past similar to this. It hasn't been a big problem. Uh, this isn't in our front yard. It is a hog shed. Uh, we did spend a little more money on the metal instead of using like scrap because we wanted it to match all of our other barns. I have it uh, made to where if we want to get the tractor underneath it and move it, we can. Look at these little guys here. They're over here taking their little naps. They love laying in the cool dirt over there. They root around and make them a little cool spot in the mud and lay down and take a nap. Oh, there's the big ones over there. Look at that. Two big pregnant mamas. So guys, thanks so much for watching. Stay tuned. 
Uh, the mamas should be having their baby soon. These little feeder pigs are going to be growing up. I need to go get the uh, hog feeder put together. I'll probably, probably make a separate video for that. <sighs> if you're not subscribed, subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment, and we'll see you next time.